Hey all, Katie Bodine here. I just wanted to give you a quick update in obesity treatment. Um, these are some updates that came out uh, this year and I think we'll continue to be getting uh, some more updates over the year as FDA continues to approve uh, sub, uh, sub Q injections uh, for obesity treatment. Um, you know, with every, every approach to patient care, we need to individualize our care. Um, according to UpToDate, Candidates for therapy must have a BMI over 30 or a BMI of 27 or over with at least one weight-related comorbidity who have not met their weight loss goals. So this is at least 5% of their total body weight at three to six months trial. And let me tell you, insurance is going to ask you to prove this if you're trying to get them approved for drug therapy, okay? And, and that means um, that they have failed to lose their weight with their comprehensive lifestyle modifications. You know, with every therapy, there are pros and cons, and you need to individualize this. There needs to be shared decision-making and be realistic with your patient, okay? You know, um, do they have comorbid conditions? Um, what is What are their preferences? Um, discuss the adverse effects. I mean, I've had people complain of severe nausea vomiting with their first ozempic shot it wasn't wasn't pretty um, and then we need to know what the cost of this is uh, according to up to date um, they do not recommend drug supplementation for weight loss including supplements labeled for weight loss you see a lot of things labeled over the counter um, they do not recommend any of these. None of them have shown benefit and are mostly not FDA approved or regulated. And um, specifically, they note that HCG is not recommended. So in terms of medical pharmacologic weight loss uh, management, uh, we need to monitor these people. So we need to monitor them every six weeks. Um, actually, we need to monitor them at baseline and make sure that there's not an underlying condition, right? Do they have hypothyroidism? Are they um, not optimized on their um, hormone um, balance? So, um, but then every six weeks, we need to monitor their weight loss, blood pressure, and heart rate. And personally, I like to monitor a little bit more frequently up front. Um, at 12 weeks, they recommend um, that they should have lost 4 to 5% of body weight. So this is a temporary solution, uh, you know, while we work on those behavioral modifications, okay? So um, if they're not at goal at 12 weeks, um, they are recommending that you taper towards discontinuation because they consider this a failure. Um, if patients are diabetic, uh, they need to increase their self-monitoring for their blood glucose. Also, as they lose weight, we need to think about uh, if, if we need to start adjusting really not only their diabetic regimens, okay, their hypoglycemic agents, but also, you know, blood pressure medicines and, and other medications they may be on. So drugs that are approved for long-term use as adjunct, you know, we need to stress like this isn't just a quick fix. We need to get these people on the dietary council, you know, they need to be exercising. Um, but our first line therapy is now the GLP-1 agonist therapy. So this is semaglutide. I'm sure you all have heard about this. It's getting plastered everywhere and it's actually hard to find these days. Um, so Ozempic, uh, Rubelsa, Swigovi. So these are weekly dosing. And then Victoza and Sexenda are daily dosing. Again, they stress that we really need to evaluate if the body weight has changed at 12 weeks and um, we need to discontinue if they are not at goal. So a couple of the big side effects, you know, rapidly losing weight, you're breaking down fat, and acute pancreatitis can occur or gallbladder disease, okay? Worth mentioning here is Manjaro, and it is being used. Um, it is not FDA approved quite yet. This will be FDA approved here very soon, but it is actually a GIP, GLP receptor agonist. Our second line agents are going to be our um, older medications. So uh, again, Orlistat, I mentioned that in the first lecture. Um, this is honestly not tolerated usually very well because of the amount of fecal incontinence, flatulence, and, and abdominal cramping it causes. 
and most of these are going to be contraindicated in pregnancy. And, and again, the spentamine uh, topiramate, um, this is going to have a lot of um, side effects. So those neurotrophic side effects because the fentermine, it's you know, can cause um, depression, it can cause um, anxiety, and this needs to be monitored. So um, BMP, creatinine, and, and again, um, these are second line and they're supposed to be short-term use, max three months, okay? Um, the third one is uh, contrave. So again, lots of side effects, dry mouth, insomnia, uh, and we need to look at those neuropsych side effects. There are a few drugs approved for short-term to use as adjunct therapy for weight loss, and I mentioned these in my first lecture. This includes the anorexients, and again, we have to limit these to 12 weeks. Um, we have several options here. A lot of patients complain about the side effects though, and so this can be self-limiting for some people that dry mouth because there are some pathomimetics, right? Dry mouth, tachycardic, constipation, um, blood pressure, nervousness, anxiety, they're jittery, right? Um, because it is an amphetamine-like um, drug, so um, there are obvious potential um, with this drugs as well to think about. So if you have a patient who is, you know, recovering addict, you might want to not want to use this drug because this is going to be similar to uh, amphetamine. I want to note that all of these are controlled substances, so you have to have your DEA uh, because of the abuse potential and, and the side effects. So again, um, these aren't recommended as first line, but they are FDA approved and you will see them used for... I would say I probably most commonly see fentermine adipex used. Again, uh, my resource is up to date and y'all have a good day.